Today on Passion for Food, we're going to be making this classic shepherd's pie. These mince and potato pies are super easy, quick, and delicious. And you can make them with just about any kind of meat you want, but when we say shepherd's pie, normally we mean lamb. So no need to be sheepish. Let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we need to do is pick our aromatics, which I know can be difficult, but hey, let us remain calm. In addition to the classic onions, carrots, celery, I'm going to be using an entire head of garlic. And you might think that'll take a wild appeal, but it's actually super easy. I like doing this over the sink just to make less of a mess, but all we need is some kind of container big enough for that to rattle around in and something to cover that with. I really only like to shake things up with this method when I'm doing an entire head of garlic. It definitely lets me get a little ahead on my kitchen prep. But after about a minute of shaking, you can see those are all nicely peeled. It can still be kind of a pain though getting all those cloves separated from those skins, so I like to actually pour in a little water and then it's super easy to separate all of those nice clean cloves just like that. And while we give those a quick chop, have you heard that this amount of garlic is effective for preventing viruses? It doesn't actually prevent the viruses, but it does prevent people from getting too close to you. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Hey, Graham, I didn't carrot all for that joke. Yeah, I know. I should probably just cut it into thin strips and then small cubes. Although I will just add that the exact size and shape you cut your vegetables into isn't super critical. Just try and have them all around the same size. Next up, we've got about four ribs of celery. And we want to be a little bit careful here. We don't want to wind up with any stocking problems. Anyway, off to the bowl we go. And last but not least, we have one large onion. And with these, it's a whole lot easier if we leave the root attached. So you just want to cut off that stem end, and then we can lay it flat and simply split it right in half like this. And it was one of those onions that took an embarrassingly long amount of time to peel. So I'm going to speed that up, and hopefully nobody will notice. And because of the inherent layered nature of an onion, all we need to do is make a couple of slices up to the root this way, and then across. And we're done. No need to make any weird little horizontal cuts. So that's it for our aromatics. Let's scoop these into our bowl, and then we can talk about our lamb. Of course, pre-ground meat would be fine, but I've had these lamb shoulder chops sitting in my freezer for quite a while, so I thought I would go ahead and use these with the new meat grinder that I just happened to have. So I'll just cut these into strips real quick, and we'll get these ground up in no time. And if anyone's curious, these little grinders just attach right to a standard KitchenAid. I'll try and remember to put a link down in the description if anyone would like to check those out. Now, just because this is lamb doesn't mean we just want to ram it all in there. You want to feed it in nice and slow, and we'll get a good even grind on our lamb chops. And, of course, the nice thing about grinding this ourselves is we don't have to worry about these being scraps that were swept up off the floor or something. In fact, I guess we could say that the quality should always meet expectations. And for some reason, the texture on the fresh ground meat just always seems a lot nicer to me. Now, I think a Dutch oven is perfect for this because not only can you cook everything in it, but you can also serve out of it. And to that, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of oil. Now, I know there's fat in the lamb, but we're going to need a little extra, especially to form that gravy a little later. And we want to heat that over high and just dump all of our meat and aromatics straight in there. And this is a good time to season this. So we're going to go in with about a teaspoon of salt along with about a tablespoon of rosemary and about a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. And we essentially just want to continue cooking this over high heat until all of our meat is fully cooked. At which point we have two more additions, about a quarter of a cup of flour, along with about three ounces, that's half a can of tomato paste. And we do want to cook those for just a minute or two to form a rudimentary roux and to develop those flavors from the tomato paste a little bit. But once we've done that, we'll go ahead and add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce along with about a cup of beef stock. 
Although you may want to add half the beef stock first and see how it looks after that before you go ahead and add the second half, just to make sure you don't wind up with a little too much gravy. I know, I know, too much gravy. What in the world am I even talking about? You can see the kind of texture that I'm going for here. I might like the occasional dry joke, but I do not like dry shepherd's pie, you guys. And at this point, we're ready to top these with your favorite mashed potatoes. Check out the link in the top right for my sour cream mashed potato recipe that I'm using here today. There's not a great deal of mystery to this part. We just want to lump out our spuds and get those spread out more or less evenly. And, you know, often if I'm making a cottage pie, I like to put cheese on top. But with the lamb, I like a little bit of crunch instead. So we're going to top this with some panko breadcrumbs. But once we're happy with that crummy coating, we'll go ahead and lamb it off to a preheated 400 degree oven where we're going to bake this for about 30 minutes. Once we go ahead and pull it out, it's a good idea to let this sit and rest for at least 10 minutes before we dig in. So let's go ahead and grab a plate of this beautiful classic shepherd's pie. I really love how versatile shepherd's and cottage pie recipes are. You can really tailor these to whatever your specific tastes are. Or to whatever ingredients or leftovers you just happen to have around. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, watch one of our other great video recipes playing on the screen now. And give me a thumbs up below and consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so you don't miss our future episodes. This has been Graham with Passion for Food.